let's start. The next session will start by Lisa Fjol, who's with us online. Hello. 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 Hi everyone. It works, <laughs> but we can't see you there. So you're an architect, artist, and partner of Architecture Art LLP, and we're gonna listen to your experiences and um, um, your presentation for about eight minutes now. We Do, can you let me know which which version it is? Is it the newest one? The version. <laughs> why, why don't you just quickly down I'll ask the audience audience will you give me 30 seconds to um because I added um I added a kind of relevant slide so audience can I just have 30 seconds to download the newer one thank you it, it, that is if it's the really 30 seconds because we're on a well, very you know how strong how good your wi-fi is have a go I, I'll be seven minutes instead. See, see okay. what you can do. Thanks. But just say no. How's the day been going so far? Oh, and now we see all your emails as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> <ooh. Sorry. laughs> see all the emails from me. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so with us? Is that, is uh, that okay? Maybe you can start talking. Thank you. If, if you're, if there's a slide up there because I'm going to okay. talk to the slides. Links near put them. There we are. Thank you so much. Yeah, so is that the first slide? Yeah, some things I learned from George Bro. Yeah? Yep. Okay, so I'm just going to set my time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I just wanted to start by um, saying thank you to anybody who might be there from the house and Johanna from the uh, client organization and funders and anyone else. Second slide. You know, looking looking back at the extraordinary um, creativity and knowledge in the house, we can all for sure feel sad and also recognize that sometimes projects like this um, become memorials, which can be a little kitsch unless one does something with that body of knowledge. And so the project... Um, we did together, after quite a long time, was called the Culture Centre in Front of Your Nose and directly referred to the fact that new, perfect, improved, projected culture centres were being drawn for this part of um, Sweden, but they did not include any spaces of creative production. There were libraries, cinemas, um, but no loose space of making. And so I want to start just by going back to June um, 2018. Pub Brick Luxury opened at Arcdes, and we were able to use perhaps the um, privilege of connections because of what we had been doing with Arcdes, um, that we were able to lobby and the nose the beautiful skirt and table made um, by our participants in Godbo were, were exhibited. That same month, we were invited to contribute to a new community centre. So I'm now up to slide four, sorry, slide four. <laughs> You're on slide four. Yeah, brilliant. So this is Kingsley Hall, built at almost the same time as the um, school in Yodbro, also glue lamb, timber beams, um, a very rich and loose community centre right at the end of the line. So the circle on the district line at the bottom of the slide is Victoria and this community centre is in Beckentree, almost not in London, 
about the same time it takes about the same time it takes to get to George Bro from Central Station. Next slide. Our commission was to contribute to an art wall on the street. The building being designed by other architects, which would demolish all the existing community centre, create a purpose-built one, and release the rest of the land for housing. Familiar, maybe. But um, what is perhaps particular is that the mayor of London Mayor introduced a new fund called the Good Growth Fund because it was recognised that development did not necessarily um, benefit the people who already lived in a place. And so this particular project um, was awarded £1.5 million, but only on the condition that Muff were involved which isn't necessarily the best beginning for a relationship. Like that's are we on slide five. I'm really bad at saying this. Yeah, are we on slide five? Sorry. So that's the in the red dots area is the our first brief. And that shows this uh, architect's drawing to demolish the existing buildings to produce this purpose built building. Next slide. We began by drawing a calendar of all the activities of cultural production that already happened in the building. And we made a very different proposal, which was instead of demolishing the existing buildings, to instead, uh, uh, sorry, that's, we're now on slide seven. Are we both on slide seven? So we made these very uh, modest proposals, which were really the reframing of the existing as something precious, with very small changes, a window here, painting an interior there, and were able to demonstrate that they already had a cultural centre it was under their nose. And the only building that happened would be on the existing car park, which is slide eight. Yeah. The clients described their ambitions for this new cultural centre, community centre, the new investment, to be something between Nando's, that's a, is a popular chicken restaurant, Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club and a library. We feel the design is as it's developing. So instead of producing just the art wall, we ended up um, protecting the existing building and adding a new hall that still allowed for some minimal um, demolition, it still allowed for new housing but the new hall holds something of the spirit of this organization with all their various activities. If you remember going back to that first slide. Yeah, we, yeah of, of the covered in advertising. So I've now still got another three minutes. And so, you know, where did we learn that way of operating? Next slide. We learned it in your role. And uh, next slide, slide 10. You know, the when and the journey to get there, to learn how much listening to, to do before making a proposal came from the experience we were well briefed when we were dropped in, you know, by parachute from the UK. In a sense, too well briefed. Slide 11. So this shows the first sketches um, that we made as we walked around um, with our 
our guys, Justina, Pear, Goran, looking into rooms, seeing all the different activities. We made sensitive proposals. We're on slide 11, is that right? Yeah. Um, for a greenhouse or a stove. But that wasn't the point. You know, in a way, um, our very particular experience of first being um, sacked by um, the house and then being, um, you know, given a second chance was the feeling in the dark of making a relationship. And when we came back, slide 12, we were able to work together to recognize that the skills of the house, in many ways, they didn't need us. We were just the wedge in the door to open the door to bring in the funding. But um, that experience of recognizing what we might be able to bring, what we might be able to take, um, slide 12, that the funding went as much to the more to a program of activities than it did to objects. And then slide 13 shows the Sorry. poster of the festival here. Lisa, Lisa. Slide 14. Lisa, time is running out. Is that, uh, are we coming to the I, last I'm one? I'm aware the time's running out. Three slides. Um, here's Alex from Muff um, making the nose with the expertise of those in the house. And the sheer scale of that bird demonstrates the, um, the skills that were there. And then we're on slide 16, 15, 16. Let's move fast. And the brilliance, if we get to slide 17, of the house that they booked the Minister of Culture before they knew what they were going to do. So a year ahead, they made that commitment to a future possibility. That's slide 17. Slide eight, that night they said, slide 17, it will be destroyed before the morning. Yeah. But four months later, slide 18, we were sent a photograph of the nose covered in snow. And the nickname that the young people of the neighborhood gave it slide 19 i've now finished with a question thank you very much wonderful thank you <laughs> can learning be brought, brought back to sweden thank you very much for giving us a uh, background to the um, the artwork that we can see outside here now and we continue this session with um, two representatives from public art agency at the time when during uh, art is happening. So we have Peter Hagdal, curator, and Matti Mannen, um, also from the curatorial team, but now director of Index. Please come up. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. We will share our time, so we have four minutes per project. Yes, cut uh, us when we have three there. Uh, my name is Martimana and I was working two years as um, yeah, employed as a curator at uh, for Cons and then six months as an external uh, curator. I'm going to talk briefly of one of the spots. Katarina uh, Bonavia was talking about it, and in the break there was this film from Joanna Billing run running. Uh, this is uh, Roslet, Ion Shopping, is one of the best examples of this dream scenario that is the Million Program, a society that works, a society that is organized and it works by itself. Uh, all these points that come here are from uh, Google and you can see the diversity that is here. It's an extremely advanced cultural situation. Uh, it's Ion Shopping, so it means that religion is important and in Roslet we have uh, a series of uh, Chargers that are defining also the type of uh, dialogues that are here. But there are plenty of organizations and they have uh, meeting situations. So for us, arriving there was like, okay, we have a good, uh, a good context here. It's possible to do something if we find something that is interesting because to present their dream situation to an artist is probably boring. So we were talking with a lot of people. We were talking with many of the, of the associations there. 
and we find out this thing that happens everywhere in the center. Uh, at the cafeteria, it's just men sitting there. At the public space, it's just men occupying the space. And, uh, and for youngsters, what we can see up here is this uh, football area. And it's well planned. The, the city planners say that, yeah, we, we turn the light till 2 o'clock in the night, and it means that the kids are here playing football instead of mm, burning cars. But what happens with uh, girls? As you have heard, in, uh, in uh, Young Shopping, there's this uh, group, Mixed Dancers. They have been working a lot for a lot of time in a basement. So they have no physical space to be presented in society. What we decided here, as the conditions were fine and we could localize these uh, boys, that is Mixed Dancers, was to offer two processes. One of them to work with them and the other to work from them. Uh, why? Because it was possible. Because uh, one of the partners, uh, Vattenhelm, the company taking care of the, of the neighborhood, is really taking care of the neighborhood. So it's clean, you can see involvement, you can see people, there's a social plan. And it was like uh, possible to talk with them and to affect on a urban planning level. And this is why Miket has been involving, uh, involved a lot with Vattenhelm and working directly with them. So one of the first actions with Miket was to do a workshop for this company to talk about power structures, to talk about other ways to deal with uh, a, a societal situation like this one. The other process was with, with, uh, with Joanna Billing, and, uh, and in this case was to work uh, really with MIG dancers as well, to produce something for them that they could use. And this is why the result was this film that has uh, several versions. Joanna is an amazing artist and she produced this brilliant film, but she was also talking with them to see how to work, how to do an artwork, how to present something that is going to stay here. So part of her uh, uh, proposal is including also a, a physical piece with a question for uh, Young Shopping and for Roslet. It's, uh, it's kind of fragile as a series of, of glass, this using the color that a uh, mixed dancer has decided to, to use for their own space. But this fragility uh, needs to be taken care of. So when the artist is going to the, to the city saying, look, this is an artwork for you, you should take care of it. And it's fragile. And somehow it's a kind of symbolic act on how uh, society is taking care of this group of girls that are taking care of society because they are offering a, 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 a an option to many, many people. And at the same time that they don't take it as a, a possible mm, profession. So mixed dancers, Sibel uh, and company, they don't have in mind that it could be their job to be there working and providing uh, 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 content and uh, possibilities to other people. It was important for me and for all the group to, to be in contact with them, but to work with several temporalities. This is why Mix uh, Dancers was uh, the starting point for, for Mikat, and the process is still going on and it's going to be growing and growing and it's affecting the construction of the whole area. But also it was important to work with, with Joanna with something faster that gives a result that can be part of the, of the realm of, of this, this group of people, of Mix Dancers. Yes. Great. Yes. He's on. Yeah. You, you're right. We can hear you. Good. <laughs> uh, all right, from that uh, we uh, move over to another city, uh, which is actually is uh, Westerås. And Westerås has a, a suburb um, called Råby, where we actually did the project. And this project is, is a collaboration with Konstfremja and Westmanland, and of course the, the museum in Westerås, the art museum. Uh, it was Konstfremja uh, has been quite involved in, in a, a specific event happening in in uh, Robi uh, in 40 years ago in the in the 60s and 70s uh, and it was um, to to have this story a little bit uh, short i could say it started up with an exhibition in in Moderna Museet in 1960s uh, by Palle Nielsen and he produced a, a, a show there that was extremely uh, viral you could say it's uh, it was called the modellen the model uh, and it was a huge play sculpture for children in, in the big main exhibition space in Moderna Museet. And this exhibition was unfortunately closed after like 10 days or two weeks or something like that, but it became extremely leg legendary. And um, one of the uh, visitors there was uh, a, a woman called Irma Sulman, who uh, um, 
went to Stockholm to Bordeaux Museum, saw this thing, and she got completely blown out. And she thought that, well, now uh, when they actually took the exhibition apart from the museum, she bought all the scrap material and exported that to Råby in Västerås. And she built it up uh, a similar uh, project as Palle Nilsen, but uh, in uh, this inflatable tent called, uh, I don't know what that is, uh, a glow. huge tent, and he, he called it uh, the balloon instead. And it was also a similar thing. It was also creating this kind of space for, for uh, uh, children in all ages to participate. And this uh, two, three, three, four things was actually the, 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 the starting point for, for uh, doing this uh, collaboration. And of course, Konstfjern has been running this project quite um, effectively, I could say, in, in the suburbs. So it was extremely natural to have that as a backdrop. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Uh, so then we tried to, what, what in this project could be sort of relevant to, to uh, have as a material to start, start all over again? Uh, and also perhaps to do a, a, a thing, a closer circle that started with Pallet Nielsen's work uh, and then continued in the balloon um, uh, and then uh, sort of can end up. So I think this whole project in Robi was, uh, the, at least from my point, to, to have some kind of collective memory represented in the, in the, in the, in the city that actually says that this is something that happened a long time ago, but now it's still there. Although we uh, invited Michael Beutler, who is a German artist, um, and his, um, the, the, the great thing about him, besides being sort of fantastic artist, uh, is he developed a quite unique practique in producing artworks where, where uh, the artwork is actually formed by uh, uh, participatory sort of techniques anyone could actually um, uh, enter in the process. So it's pretty much in collectively build something together. Uh, and in the starting process of this, we have the whole thing rigged up as, as, a, as a fantastic thing with a uh, workshop situation in one of the buildings, etc. We have local um, uh, project manager that actually should help us um, do this thing. Unfortunately, in the beginning, the whole uh, workshop actually burned out. It was a, it was a big fire in there. So the whole setup was actually a little bit, um, what can you say, destroyed, or not a little bit, Completely. totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then we have to start from that thing. But Michael took that as a possibility of actually not, not stressing so much about the, the, the f physical building, but he created a, a workshop, uh, temporary workshop space in, in on the site actually, uh, and started to produce something he called in the beginning uh, a forest flipper festival that later on became the idea of Robi Planet. And it's quite funny thing. He created this huge, as you can see, the huge white ball there that, uh, that uh, is a, it's a play, play tool for, for interacting with each other actually. To maneuver that in, in, the, in the forest, uh, it you need to have extremely much efforts from all surrounding and people that, that pushes this thing and, and uh, that create this kind of uh, path for, for, for the ball. Uh, how much time do I have still? It's Nothing. Okay, <laughs> then we do. <laughs> the the most important thing for me is though, it's actually to to have uh, such a short uh, project uh, that is more uh, extremely temporary to have the permanent um, uh, reminiscences of the project, and this is the this pavilion that and that pavilion holds the the rules and and the rubber ball and all these kind of things, so it could easily sort of be activated again. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so with that, after artists, curators, it's time for research perspective. We have Henna Harry here, researcher and curator and director of photography gallery Hippolyte. 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 Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, and you will talk about your report. 
about your research um, about curatorial team. Yes, please. Thank you, Annika. Um, so I'm in Nari, as you heard already, um, and I have been I have been looking at the work of the curatorial group in this project, <coughs> and I have interviewed them twice, all five of them, in 2017 and 18. Um, and I will try to give you some glimpses of what uh, uh, I found out, and also um, na the na of, of the nature of the of the curatorial work in this sort of a project. And here's um, Sulna Station in in Stockholm, as you probably all know. I haven't been there, but you you maybe have, and. If we are thinking of a curator and curator's work in an institutional setting where, where everything is already sort of in place, the space is there, it, it is either the white cube or a metro station, um, and the artist is also there, or the artists are also there, you, you and also the institutional uh, people, the people who are working with the exhibitions and also they have a policy uh, you you have to take uh, in in consideration when you are doing the work but still you are working within limits you have drama <laughs> there where you can move um, but if you think of Giovanna here uh, working in uh, Buden and in, in, in the in inauguration of uh, San Sandi Halil? Hal Hilal. Hilal, the other way around. Uh, that is a totally different situation, like in all of the Constender um, sites. The curator um, has to be uh, working in ambivalent circumstances, of course. Uh, they have to also, the curators have to identify what is possible and wise to do, and together with others. So it all needs a lot of mediation and negotiation uh, within uh, with different parties. There's the there might be the construction company. There might be, of course, there's always the municipality. Uh, there are the there's the civil society people in on the site. The people who have made, in this case, who made the application to take part. So a lot of extra um, things to be considered. And this is Lena from. Um, who, in 2018, when I interviewed her, she said, we assumed that we, in some cases, would be working in dwelling areas with populations of re refugees from different parts of the world. We already knew that working with public art itself can cause frictions where a broad scope of competencies are absolutely necessary. And this um, broad scope of competencies made them, uh, Magdalena Malm and Lena, uh, think that they need a team that, uh, that would have more competencies than just the curator's competence. And here's the team. There's Inger Höyer Aspemur, who is an art educator. Peter Hagdal, here, artist, but who has been working as a curator as well in in uh, Stathes Konstrod, Lena from who has a background in uh, journalism, uh, Joanna Zavieda who is an architect but also has been working with uh, with uh, public art, uh, Marti Manen who is a curator originally also has been working a lot with in museums and white boxes. And then in grey there is the infrastructure of the uh, Statens Konstrad, Magdalena, Emma Engström and others who have been helping them out. But the core group was, was the five of them. 
And it could be clearly told from the interviews that they had two phases in working with these projects. And the first one was the pre-production phase, where they were meeting regularly, Tuesday afternoons, was it? Yes. And mapping knowledge, mapping uh, what they know already, what the others know already. But also building understanding of what they were facing in the production phase and trust among each other so that they could be kind of returning to all of the knowledges that there is gathered in the group later on in the when the things get heated in the production phase. Um, and so um, in the production phase, they, they were, of course, working hands on, on sites and it was very messy and busy and, and very stressful, I, I gathered um, from the interviews. And uh, also one thing that was really important was that they were working uh, step by step. So, so through this uh, negotiation and also uh, being on the site and then going back together with the group and having a time to reflect uh, what are we up against and what can we do was really important. Um, and then they were also, uh, in some cases, sharing the work in the, uh, on sites in pairs so that they were supporting each other. And what uh, Joanna said, um, we've together built an idea of a balance between artistic experimentation, local way, importance and integrity, or how to balance all these different aspects of this project. So even if they were coming from different professional narratives to the same spot, uh, they could really, through the, the maybe long even uh, pre-production phase, they could kind of uh, be uh, welded together as a proper team that they, they were uh, thinking quite alike about what they were doing on sites. And then, what was, the, what was gained and what now? Maybe th those are the <laughs> questions that I'm asking. Mm. Um, and what I understood uh, from them is that, that it was an important thing to do and it was, uh, uh, many, many things were learned and it would be wonderful to continue, have a continuation somehow in the future. And from Inger's uh, 15 different methods, I think that the step by step, what they, what they, what was their method in doing, uh, in working on the sites. So listening and working together with the civil society was really important. And Marty, uh, talking about the cold structure and the close structure, um, that's also one lesson to be learned, I think. So fully understanding and supporting the nature of this kind of work so that the code structure understands that. Um, and Peter's, uh, the quality question. So Statens Konstrot is working with contemporary art and that should be on the top list of the important matters. Lovely, thank, thank you. you very much. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Maybe, maybe you'd like to respond to the um, to the uh, results or the reflections that we just heard about the curatorial team. Do you recognize yourself and your work? Yes, if you quote me, I, um, I, 
I don't really recognize myself, but then again, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, no, but I think it's, it's uh, we talked earlier on about power structures, and I think when, when, uh, when we as an o a stately run organization enters a sort of uh, uh, areas where we almost bypass the, the, the local com municipality, uh, it causes quite much friction, of course, when we got a, f uh, we, we strengthened a voice from from uh, the citizens and and tried to make a, a project. Lots of the difficulties we had with our projects was actually to, to get on terms with, with the municipalities all around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was extremely nice, uh, talking about early on about power structures. Uh, it's of course, uh, our organization, we need to be aware that we have certain powers, of course, and we are employed and things like that. But a uh, lot of this process has been of, of giving out power to to others, actually, and to really create this kind of idea of, of <coughs> a, a, a dialogue. So I think that's that's a funny thing about this project. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, of course, when, when we tried to identify artists that was uh, interesting for Konst Hender, we had e extremely, in this curatorial team, extremely much effort would put in, in uh, uh, having another... Uh, skill set of artists uh, than we what we usually work with. Uh, the need for, for artists that are more, uh, have a, a, a dialogue-based practice and that had a, a CV of, of doing things locally with uh, citizens and groups of people. And, 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 and that was extremely interesting to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, of course. And also this thing that this is, uh, as Inger said, it's 15 places with an amazing number of processes. So each, uh, each uh, space is asking for several ways of acting and you are negotiating with a lot of people at the same time. So you have to adapt your way of talking to many, many people to explain more or less the same thing that you have no idea what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's in process, because it's production, because it's new and it's, uh, it's also a new system for the, for the institution. Uh, but it's true that there's this compilation of, 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 uh, of uh, people with uh, several point of view uh, together that can define this type of structures. It's impossible to, to, to do it with just one voice. Mm -hmm. But it's part of the democratic idea of this process probably that to have all these discussions, to learn to, uh, to uh, a list of artists, but then to go deep into them and to talk all together to decide, okay, who can be working in this, uh, in Budel? who can be this person that can uh, be in direct contact with the civil society. To do it first, you need to know the civil society, you need to know the conditions of the place, to see if, the, uh, if, if, if a, situa a situation there is possible. And it, it demands uh, an incredible amount of uh, work on site. Yeah. And Lisa, you work in a team as well? And you were talking about your team? Well, it doesn't work a team. It's got, okay, I'm going to try to get my, I mean, the, the work of Johanna, who was, um, you know, the fact that she was from an architectural background as well as art practice, gave um, a huge, uh, let's think of the right word, but um, armature of support, both conceptual and practical. And so um, that was substantial and uh, she was also someone to have a diet you know to have that dialogue of the challenges um of our distance so it gave it gave intimacy to the entire project mm -hmm. but i suppose given the um sounds really bad i suppose given the tension just like in the uk when there is an air of austerity and limited money for culture. It becomes quite hard as the um, as the artist from abroad to justify your existence. And so, um, you know, I'm a little uh, yeah, I'm a little sad that um, you know this, the, the the limit the limits of distance. But I don't think it could have been any better. You know, Johanna's uh, work was exemplary and extraordinary. And I think in many ways, um, the pro that, 
you know, I know that the organisation is moving in steps in how much autonomy they give to a community, and that this is already a big move. Previously, when commissions, locations, and commissions would have been decided centrally, so it was very powerful. Hmm. Would you like to add anything to that, Hena? Um. Yes, I I uh, I suggested if I'm not <laughs> if I remember right in my article that it would be it would make sense to think rethink maybe the workload of the the curators and how how there could be if this is going to continue if uh, Stades Constrat is going to uh, work further with this type of a um, setting that if there would be a team would that would take uh, some of the the negotiations es especially the legal issues or the municipality issues uh, away from the curator so that the curator could be um, concentrating more on on being on, on other sort of negotiations mm. which are uh, with the civil society and the artist maybe thanks yeah yeah, but I think uh, one of the one of the essence of, of these projects has been sort of to give all these processes time, and that's the key factor in all things. If you do projects on this uh, grassroots level uh, with uh, this loose sort of premises, then of course the only thing you need is lots of time and mm. confidence, of course, yes. and that this mm. will be okay in the end. Did you have enough time here? Yeah, th absolutely, yeah, I think so. Yeah, mm. of course you can always have more time. But no, I think really we worked with this for one and a half year just to develop the project together with our artists. And uh, I think for them to be practicing uh, developing this on site was uh, the crucial thing, yeah. Mm. So what does it mean to you now when, when some time has passed? Do you see the project differently? Uh, the thing is that the project never ends, no. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's still happening. There was a period that was the production time, but the, the, the side effects will continue mm -hmm. and probably will continue forever. And we can see some mm, presentations of the works, we can see some works, and we can see some process that will stay there. It can stay as a narrative, it can stay as objects, it can stay as something that, that is uh, physical as well. But I think it's, uh, it's interesting to be able to do this evaluation continuously. And then this step step should mean that it's an evaluation process. And the next step is not decided because you are really taking care of this uh, information that you are gathering and, and, and creating with it. Uh, with the special thing that we are talking about an explosion of processes here. So it's yeah. really difficult to, 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 to take care Can of I every ask single question? detail. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, Please. So did did people see why I presented the project in London? Yeah. Yes, yes. And it's because I was, I was looking at your, the website, and one of the ambitions for um, this particular program was the idea of dissemination. It had an air act. The work itself was an act of research, and the commissions from the curate from curators was seen as research practice as well as the commissions themselves. And so, uh, and it also talked about dissemination within Sweden, but also abroad. And, and I'd just like to say that the project has had great resonance and interest whenever I presented it in London, but I just don't know how much of a comfort that is for the participants in your role that it has this resonance elsewhere but perhaps it is also interesting to think about what would happen if your budgets were that much bigger that you were even larger players in terms of how the cookie crumbles at a scale of the municipality related to of, it of uh, driving this, yeah. the shape of development Related to, it, to this uh, comment there, um, I remember when the, fir the first time when the, the film in from Hur with Roxy Farad was presented in London. You know, we are talking about a group of uh, uh, 
kids from a neighborhood and suddenly the film where that they have been working with is presented in a, in a capital and it's mm. not in the Swedish capital. So for them, they were using this fact to deal with, with the municipality, saying, look, they are taking care of it, they are watching at what we do here, so you should take care of us as well. So it's also this boomerang effect when something is presented somewhere else that then you can apply it to your own narrative and it in, a, in a power relation, something that can work somehow. Uh, I can take your, uh, some of your questions back, if I mm, relating the curatorial aspect of it, uh, because there's no tradition of curatorial practice with public art, but also with galleries art. So there's no need for curators in galleries. There's no need for curators in, in public art, supposedly. So it's an, still an interesting question: Why are we here? Mm -hmm. Why we were here? Mm. Uh, and and it's uh, and there's no tra and as there's no tradition. There's uh, no way to deal with it. And it's also interesting that Statens Control has been working with it, with this matter, and how to how to provide content and how to make it an effort to 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 do some research in this field. But I think it's worth saying that it was the fact that it is an art project rather than a regeneration project is the power of of the Swedish of your of art is happening versus because it's open-ended and questioning without a determinate conclusion. Whereas, of course, um, fighting to change a brief when you're working with much larger sums of money and expectations and time frames uh, means that the experimentation was one of the greatest luxuries for me of uh, taking part in this. So that although you know, I do agree that, that maybe having people from elsewhere is uh, can, be very, can be negative. For me, the experience was only positive, and I did do my best to share, you know, if there was anything to be shared, to share it as much as I could with those constraints, mm. I suppose. Yeah. Thanks for that. and. Unfortunately, our, our time is running out, um, but it's interesting to hear how we keep coming back to the importance of time and um, in, the, in these type of works and, and com combining that collective, the knowledge about working collective now and also the how you um, emphasize the importance of time when you work together and learn together as well. So thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Or Lisa. <laughs> and <Lisa>. thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Hannah and Marty and Peter. Thank and you. let's continue the discussions outside. Thank, thank you. you.